Well, he's a good player, first of all. And then they started, they started raining threes on us, uh, attacking us, getting us out in transition. And we couldn't make a shot. And they had, they had numbers uh, throughout that third quarter. Um, yeah, they got, they got their, their backcourt was, um, they um, controlled the game. And Chris and, and, and Devin, they manipulate the pick and rolls and put you in some um, tough to sit uh, positions. But that first nine minutes of that, that third quarter, you know, we just, we just could not score enough buckets to stay up with their threes. And like I said, it seems like they were running on us. It was a four on three, three on two, five on four. We didn't have, we didn't have our legs getting back. Eva. Hey Scott, you've talked about the turnovers before. They were pretty um, evenly spread tonight. What were you seeing as, as kind of the root cause of that? Well, they, I mean, they were crowding the paint. They were, this is, they're a physical team, as you, as you know. They don't allow layups. They make you earn at the free throw line. It's old school basketball. That's a good team. That's a, that's a team that's going to give a lot of teams a lot of problems. Um, they're, they're very handsy. You got to be strong with the ball. You know, even our, we had some good looks inside with Rui and even Denny and, and Alex are starting three of our starters and they swipe down at the ball and they might get you, they might get your arm or your hand, but they're physical enough. They, they're not going to get called on those all the time, but those are, those are turnovers. Um, but I, I, I thought, I thought we played solid. I mean, we gave up a three at the end of the second quarter in the third quarter, we just couldn't make enough shots and then they got out in transition and we just couldn't stay up with them. Chase. Yeah, Scott, what did you see from uh, Daniel Gafford tonight in his first game back? I keep, I mean, every game, I, he just shows me something that I really love. He was, he was competing, plays with toughness, and we need that. We need that. Uh, he's going to keep getting better. I, I love his, I love his potential. Uh, I know we have you know, the rest of this season. We're going to still keep um, improving him, but I, I, I see. Couple of things tonight. I, I saw that he didn't do uh, last game. He didn't have opportunities, but he was contesting perimeter jump shots. And you have to really shoot over him. He's gonna. He's long and he's outstretched his arms and he's athletic and he catches. He finishes. He tough. He cares. I like that. I like. I I can't say enough good things about him. I just hope that you know he can keep building his uh, conditioning up and his. You know, he stays healthy the rest of the year. You mentioned the impact that uh, Chris Paul has made on them. As a coach and a, a former point guard, just what impresses you the most about his basketball IQ and, and how he can sort of control a game? Well, you, the biggest thing you can see that they believe. He gives them a belief. Plus, they, I mean, they got talent. They got a lot of talent. They're big. Is uh, doesn't get enough credit. And Devin is finally, uh, finally an All Stars now. I mean, he's going to be an, an annual All Star player. Uh, but, but Chris Paul gives their, their, their guys a lot of confidence and they, they, he controls the game. He controls the game. They're, they're going to be, they're definitely going to be a tough out in the playoffs. And, but we all know that it's, it's um, playoffs are you know, with that, with their team. I mean, they're going to battle for, for, uh, for spots uh, down the stretch and it's going to be an exciting playoff series out West. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, you mentioned kind of Gafford's potential. I, I'm wondering what what is he like uh, vocally when when he's on the court? And I know it's only been three games and it takes a while to learn terminology and all of that. But yeah. how, how have you noticed what he's like personality wise from that end? I, I think it's too early right now. I mean, if I had to say, if I had to pick, um, He's, he's quiet, but I don't know. I mean, he's just, he's new to the group. He's, uh, but I, I don't know. I can't answer that question, but he, I just know this, he competes. And if he doesn't, if he's not vocal now, we can get it out of him. I, I love his toughness. I love his, his competitive spirit and his care level. You can just see it. He's engaged during timeouts. He's looking right at me. He's uh, he listens to his guards and he wants he wants to he wants to do the right thing and 
He's talented. That's a, that's a great pickup for us. Chase. Yeah, Scott, it was sort of an off night for Rui. Uh, why do you think that was? Was it something that the Suns did defensively, or did he need to be more aggressive? No, nah, they, they were physical. Like I said, they, were, they, were, they, they make you play a physical brand of basketball, and if you don't bring it, you're not going to have success. And I don't, think, I don't think our bigs brought it tonight. Um, and that's, that, that hasn't happened with Rui. Rui's had a nice stretch of games. He bounced back. It wasn't one of his better nights. Um, but he, he, he would, he'll bounce back. He had a, he had a great, a great game last night. You know, back-to-backs are not always easy for younger players. They're, they have to wrap their mind around it. You got to deal with it and you got to fight through it. Fatigue is a mental thing. It's not a physical thing. We all could do more, more than we ever would, you know, ever can imagine if you just keep going out and doing it. And, and with Rui, it seems like he, he, he he didn't match their physicality, but like I said, he'll bounce back. I'm looking forward to the next game for all of us. Ava. Um, Scott, just wanted to follow up on something you said pregame. You mentioned that you guys switched up some stuff to make sure that the younger players could see Russ's kind of preparation, even though you kind of have to keep separate in the locker room. Did you just mean you literally shifted who's in the locker room when, or, or what it, What are you guys doing on that? Yeah, one? yeah you know, with, with, with COVID, you, there's so much, I don't, I don't know the exact spacing on each, you know, each locker room stall. It's just, the whole thing is just, it's madness, but it's the right thing to do for, to keep everybody as safe as possible. But, so yet we don't have, you know, you, you need a football locker room to have all the spacing. We don't have that. No team does. I mean, I'm sure every team is, you know, you usually have two locker rooms. On the road, we have two locker rooms, even for the coaches. Uh, but we move some guys around, and it's important. You know, Danny, it's important for Danny to see, to see uh, our leadership, how, how they prepare. It's a, it's a tough business. This is a tough league. It's 82 nights in a normal year that you got to be mentally, physically, emotionally just – ready to give everything you have for your teammates and and there's times trust me everybody feels you know an off day but you can't you can't give into off days you got to fight through it and for him to see that at a, at a young age is very important I've been in locker rooms and I'm sure everybody in our team has been in locker rooms where you have veteran guys that not so good for your young guys and they see some bad things they see some bad habits they see some in, uh, unprofessional things and you know, with, with, with Brad and Russell, they're not seeing that. I, I know what they're seeing, and I know they're going to get better from it. Zach. Coach, you talking about that uh, just sparked something to me. Like, how are you and your staff doing, like, 50 games into this season of just craziness and just keeping up on a long road trip? How are you guys, like, staying together during this, this year? It's, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's tough on, on all of us. I mean, we're very, you can't, you know, you, home games, you have Zoom meetings. I'm, I'm sick and tired of like everybody else is. I'm, I'm even want to see you guys. And that's in any normal year. I wish we had Zoom probably next year, in the middle of the year. But it, it's, it's definitely, it's hard. It's, we're all social. Um, Creatures. We all want to be. All want to be next to, you know, our friends, our coaches, our, our players, and you know, this this is hard on everybody. But I always tell our guys, and I tell myself, the good thing we're there's 29 other teams the same. I'm not experiencing anything the other guys aren't experiencing. There's a lot. There's a lot more uh, things that are going on in the world that we should be more concerned of over my my particular mental health. Obviously, big shoes to fill for you, uh, starting in Bradley Beal's place. Uh, what was your approach uh, in stepping into that role tonight? Uh, honestly, it doesn't change much uh, my mentality and the way I come to the game. I think uh, every time I'm missing a player and more when it's one of our best players or our best players, it's tough to uh, uh, win games. But um, I don't think it changed anything for me mentally. I just always come out there playing the game and do if I have to score, if I have to play defense, if I have to create for others, I just try to do that. Um, and today 
I was feeling good offensively and just got going. And what have you seen from Daniel Gafford so far? Um, and what do you think about his return tonight? I mean, he's great for us. You know, he protected pain, uh, something that we need. Offensively, he's always trying to get offensive rebound. He's always finishing around the rim and, and give us like those, uh, you know, easy points where um, what we needed, you know. So uh, it's always uh, good having somebody coming back from injury and, and, and playing and, and contributing for the team. Ava. Hey, Hal. Um, Scott was talking about how he felt like the physicality of the Suns led to a lot of the turnovers tonight. How do you feel like um, physicality played into tonight's game? I feel like that's something that uh, you guys have talked about before. Um, I, think, I think like after the next game and, and a couple other games this season. Um, I mean, we got to come out ready to not get any calls, you know. Um, we just got to be strong with the ball, play uh, um, tough. I think sometimes we are asking too much for fouls, me, uh, sometimes more than anybody else. But, you know, I think uh, when you're in the spot, we are, uh, we got to own the respect from the referees. And um, I think we just got to play hard, play through contact, play through somebody slapping your arm, somebody uh, uh, following you. Sometimes referee don't see, it's a tough game to uh, referee. So I think we just got to be strong with the ball and uh, take care of the ball. I think turnovers are always, uh, it will always hurt a team. And sometimes we go in stretches that we have a couple or three, four turnovers in a row and, and the team going around. Um, so I think it's just being tough. And, and, and I think sometimes choosing better time to drive, see if the pain, it's, there's a lot of people in the pain, so you got to do something else. But uh, most of it is just being focused and strong. And then uh, what changed in the third quarter there from your perspective? I mean, we were kind of soft and they got going. Um, when you, they're one of the best teams in the league. And when you get a player like Devin Booker, where he didn't play that great in the first half, you know he's going to come aggressive in the second half. And we gave him a couple of easy ones. And then he got it going and he got some tough ones. And then the whole team got going. Um, I think Chris Paul also get, did a good job getting everybody involved. Um, you know, they're one of the best teams. We just got to play of the right way the whole game. Uh, I think that was a six, seven minute stretch that they, they just opened 20 points on the, on the scoreboard and it's hard to come back from that. Zach. How will well, with like 20 games left here in the regular season, when you, you know, think about these first 50 games or so and just everything, the league has been going through, I know with your home country going through a really tough time during the pandemic, just what has this, this season been like for you personally? Uh, it's been different. I mean, a lot of emotions, you know, um, our team had some good stretches, some bad stretches, some injuries that kind of, you know, when we are starting to play well, um, we got some guys going down and we haven't played with the whole squad a lot of games um, and then on the side we got all these things going on for me personally personally uh, seeing how Brazil is being hit with uh, with COVID and how people are you know losing lives and losing family members uh, I know a lot of people there are losing friends and family members and um, and I'm out here you know playing the game and trying to you know not think much about it it's hard and knowing that my parents are down there, um, my family is down there and I mean, you never know what, what's gonna happen, you know? So um, I'm just trying to um, stay connected with them the more, the more I can. Uh, they can't really come see me. Uh, I haven't seen my parents for like two years since COVID hit it. Um, so it's been tough, but you know, I'm doing what I love. You know, uh, my parents and my family know that um, I'm chasing my dreams and I think that's uh we got to see the positive. So uh, it's been tough, but everybody going through tough times. What do you think happened in the, the third quarter there? Why were they able to take advantage to, to such a significant uh, degree? Uh, I just think we wasn't, they, they came out a little more aggressive than us and um, we never picked it up from there. And uh, we know you've done a lot of uh, kind of coaching up of, of Rui Hachimura 
this year. What do you think was different about him tonight? Obviously, he's been playing really well lately, but they were able to hold him to six points tonight. Um, you know, uh, sometimes you have tough nights like that. That's part of the game. Uh, for him, he just makes sure he got to be aggressive, miss and make. So uh, the adjustment for him is make sure he's aggressive uh, regardless of kind of what's going on. Zach. Russ, I want to talk more about last night just because we, we haven't been able to talk to you um, since that game. What did you see from the film that you guys were really able to do um, down the stretch and kind of come away with that win? It seemed like it was something to build off with everybody playing at least. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you have our full team, we play, you know, you're able to know and kind of see what you get. Uh, and then, you know, you play well. Hold on, I'm doing media cash. I'll be on the sec. Right. Ava. Russ, um, Scott Brooks was talking tonight about how he's switched some of the locker rooms around so that the younger guys can see your game day preparation. Is that weird for you, knowing that some of the younger guys are just like watching you go through your regular routine that you've been doing for years? No, no. Um, it's not weird at all. It's, um, it's a part of growing and being professional. I think that's a part of leadership is making sure you can, you don't have to do exactly what I do, but understand that it's mental. You got to get your mind prepared to be able to go out and, and, and be, you know, as consistent as possible. And um, Scott also was talking about physicality tonight and how that might have played into some of the turnovers. How do you feel like that played into the game tonight, if, if at all? Um, I thought it was big in the second half, especially. Um, you know, he wasn't physical on the defensive end um, and then offensively. Uh, you know, they got their hands on the basketball and, um, you know, got out of transition, hit some threes. Chase. Uh, Russ, what'd you see from Daniel Gafford tonight in his return and, and just what have you thought about the impact he's made for you guys? Um, I thought he's great. You know, obviously he's getting his legs back. He's going to get his win back going, but his size, ability to, his ability to be able to protect the basket is big for us. Um, and once he gets his legs back and keep going, and obviously we, we got to turn up a notch as the season kind of close in on us, uh, but hopefully he can get back to full strength. And when it comes to um, setting an example for younger players and work ethic and, and preparation, how much is it, um, you know, sort of getting priorities in order in terms of, you know, your life off the court? Are there sacrifices that you feel like people have to learn how to make, you know, in their, their social lives or, or that sort of thing? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge sacrifice, but that part I know only can help us so much. Uh, my, my life is a little different than there. I got three kids. They play on you. <laughs> they probably live by themselves, a lot of the guys. Uh, so I have a wife and three kids, and my life is totally different on the sacrifices that and the time and the things I have to do, especially throughout my whole career. So it's something that they got to figure out that's best for them uh, to be able to create their, some consistency in their own game. I'm sorry, just one follow up on that. Is that something that friends and family had to learn about you earlier in your basketball career where it's like, hey, you know, it's practice time. Don't ask me to do something else kind of thing. Everybody know when it's game day, they don't they know not to call me, text me. Um, I talk to my mom, my dad, my brother, my wife, my kids. Um, other than that, um, that's pretty much it. Unless it's an emergency. Other than that is because this is my job. A lot of people see this as entertainment, but this is my actual job. This is what I do. Um, and I, I treat it as a job. So, uh, you know, like any other job somebody have, I take their job seriously. I expect everybody to take my job seriously as well. All right, we'll finish with you. Hey, Russ. Obviously, you were limited on back-to-back -back somewhat to start the season. You were going through the quad injury, other things. At this point, are you, would you say that you're just fully healthy where, you know, you don't even need to have minutes managed, you know, late in the second half here when you're still getting run in the fourth quarter? Um, well, yeah, I'm there. Just, uh, you know, just try to find ways to keep our team going, you know, based on who's playing, who's out, who's in. It's a little difficult, but trying to figure out how to manage the game. But, um, you know, still trying to figure that out. And as we kind of go along this season and try to make this run, uh, still trying to figure that out. How did the ankle feel being out there uh, for the first time in a little while? Oh, um, man, it felt great. Um, with the limited time that I was out there, you know, it felt 
felt natural. It felt good to be out there um, after these this six game stretch that I've been missing. Um, I kind of it was kind of sore at the end, but other than that, you know, I just felt good being able to get up and down the floor. Really. And that injury, you know, when it happened, looked pretty serious from just you know like what we could see on on TV. Um, what was it kind of like your your reaction to you know the the initial reaction and finding out that maybe it wasn't as serious as it looked? Um, I mean, I didn't. I had kind of like the same injury before with the same ankle, but I tried to play on it, so I kind of knew what was you know going to go, what I was going to go through. It was it wasn't as bad as the time I did it when I played in Chicago. We played Toronto, and I did I did the same thing. It wasn't as bad. I think it was like a minor low ankle sprain, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but other than that, swelling wasn't as crazy as I thought. And I mean, the recovery from the day of to the next day was quicker than I thought too. I thought it was going to be out for a little bit longer. But, you know, with the training staff that we have, with the training guys that we have here, with the trainers and stuff, you know, they work magic. Because there was one point in time where I thought I was going to be on crutches for like two days. And then like the next day I was off. Of it. <laughs> Neil. Hey, Daniel. Uh, glad to see you back. For the stretch that you were out, how at least were you still able to spend that time, you know, maybe just, learning the system, learning terminology, integrating with your new teammates and those kinds of things? Uh, every minute and every second of it, you know, I really just tried to kind of like lock in on all the terminology, on all the plays and things that, you know, we do here. You know, it was kind of a bit, you know, it was kind of a bit of a blur when I got out there at first, because you know, trying to keep up with those plays and stuff was kind of, it was kind of tough trying to do that and then rehab and stuff, trying to stay in the mental space. So, you know, focusing on coming back, certain things like that. But, um, once, I mean, once I put my mind to it, I just decided to sit down and go through most of the plays by myself and try to remember as much as I can to be able to, you know, just come out and play the best way I can.